What caused you to want to call it Prime and not just like Loop Loop Community or or whatever? Like, what where did that come from? Wow, that is actually I think the first time someone's ever asked me that question. Welcome to the Worship Leader Hangout Podcast. I am so glad you're here. I have a new friend of mine named Matt McCoy. You might know him. He's the, what are you? Are you the founder, founder. and CEO of yep. Loop Community? A Loop Community, that's it. That's right, man. It's so good to have you on the podcast. It's an honor, really. I've been uh, following Loop Community, actually, a what do you call him? A member? Not a member. A community a member. Community, Yeah, a community member since... The community tracks were nine nine dollars. Do you remember that? Wow! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so that was about seven years ago. We we joined up, and I just I knew I wanted to start using loops because I wanted my band to kind of raise up to a certain skill level. And I figured, yeah, yeah. At, at that time, it just made more sense to say, okay, this is the minimum of what I want us to be as a right. band, right? And and they did. They rose up to that occasion. We actually started using loops a little less. Uh, at some point, and then we're kind of using them uh, more now for some reason. But anyway, uh, enough about me, man. Tell us a little bit about you, kind of how you got started in that, but also, you know, just who you are. Yeah, totally. Well, I, uh, so my name is Matt, live in Chicago, and uh, with my wife, Mary, and two kids, we got a three and a half year old and a one and a half year old named Maverick. And he's and in he's the room with you. He's actually yeah. sitting right over here watching Daniel Tiger. That's awesome. While I'm, uh, I'm Eric. While I'm doing this, and um, I love. So it. yeah, we're we're in Chicago. I've been a worship leader almost all of my like as far back as I can <laughs> remember. You know, as like a my parents yeah. were involved in music at church, and so I was always around worship music at church. Yeah, but I didn't start leading worship till I was in middle school, and I've been leading worship ever since then. Do you and remember I, the first time you led worship? I do. I was. Uh, my dad had taught me how to play guitar on like a very old nylon guitar that had yeah. like a neck that was like this wide. It was hard to even get my, oh my little gosh. hand around it. But he taught me on a nylon guitar because the string it was so a lot softer, like easier yeah. to press down the string strings. That's but the neck point. was just yeah. so wide. They're too wide on those. Yeah. And I led ones. worship for a uh like a small group. There were like eight people circled up in our living room. And I was I remember being so nervous. And I remember just totally like botching one of the songs and I remember actually pausing and stopping. Cause I like, didn't know what to do. Like I had messed just up so together. badly that I didn't yeah. even know like what to even do. And my dad was just like, you know, kind of on the side, like kind of encouraging me to like keep going. And yeah, but yeah, I've been leading worship ever since. And I've been on staff at churches at small churches. My dad was a pastor of churches. So I was a part of church plants where we were doing like, you know, hundred people setting up in a school auditorium. Yeah. But I've also been on staff at like really large mega churches. So I was on staff at Willow Creek in Chicago for a couple of years and then Harvest Bible okay. Chapel in Chicago for about nine years. Uh, I was at the Vineyard Church in Cincinnati Wow, for four or five years. So you said you were at the, the second church. You said you were there nine years. Yeah. At Harvest Bible Chapel. Wow. That's how long so, I've been where I am now. So yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I feel like I spent like almost like a whole career yeah. of time on staff at churches, like almost 20 years on staff at church. Wow. And um, I just love, to... I love Sorry. ministry. No, yeah. I love worship ministry. It's just always been something that's very much ingrained in me. Yeah. And that's uh, awesome. Did you go to college? I went to the university of Cincinnati, Okay. studied electronic media, which what? was like at that time. So this was in 2004. Mm-hmm. It was like building very basic websites, some audio production, some video production. Um, honestly, it was not a really great degree. <laughs> I could have learned. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is that at that time, if I would have had YouTube, if what if what if I would have had what kids have access to now, like with YouTube. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, I would have been like out of control. Yeah, uh, you could learn everything you want on YouTube. You really can. It's crazy. So honestly, you yeah. could probably get a better education on YouTube now than I got in college. Yeah. Especially that in stuff. that field, especially in that, I mean, in probably many fields, but yeah, I mean, I went to school for worship ministry and I've had to teach myself everything about video yeah. 
and yeah. like video production and stuff. So I, I know how you feel. And I guess but some of what you did learn probably a little bit went to what you do now with Luke community. Yeah, but a I little mean, bit. Still, I mean, it's a totally I think it, different. If anything, it more just like encouraged me to kind of stay inside the the technology and computer like space, mm. yeah. Which is for sure what Loop Community was, and that's what that's why Loop Community was so special for me was that like I was able to combine worship leading, which I loved leading worship, but I could combine that with technology, and I had always loved technology, and mm-hmm. so when I was able to like figure out how to like combine the two together, it just blew my mind, and I loved it. I was homeschooled seventh and eighth grade. And I, in those time, in that time, I learned how to do flash websites. Do you remember mm-hmm. flash? I do. Yeah. yeah. Really annoying website that. splash right. screens that nobody uses anymore. <laughs> no. And everyone would be like, skip intro. I used to have to re, re like re redo my flash player all the time. Yeah. I know. I was like, I update know. your flash player. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again. This is like, in, yeah. in like the year 2000 flash was like so huge. Every website mm-hmm. like had a flash intro. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they called it like a splash screen. Anyways, I learned how to make those in middle school, early in high school. And I started a web design company called mm-hmm. Vortex Websites. Oh, nice. And we made websites for like different local businesses. And we also did slideshows and videos for weddings. And so I was always really, really interested in computers and technology in that way. And that's why it was just so exciting when I was able to figure out how to merge worship leading and that. Yeah. So. That's pretty That's cool. That's where and Loop Community came from. So were you full-time when you started Loop Community? Like, were you full-time at a church? Yeah, I was leading worship at a church full-time. Okay. I had been already, I had been using tracks or loops, whatever you want to call them. Um, I had been using loops already for 10 years at that point. Okay. On my so own. And I was making you're my very own. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, I've been using them since 2001. Were you using Ableton or something else uh in the very very beginning it was reason and then ableton live version two i started on ableton version two yeah i had and reason three and four by the way reason so. three yes yeah reason three and four those yeah. that was yeah oh, that's man. where i thought i was like i'm i've made it yeah i've made and i i've made a, a few tracks um yeah. so that way i can like do a bass solo with the yeah. track and man it took me it took me forever those reason days were so fun though. I can still like yeah. remember the logo coming up on the screen, mm-hmm. like reason 3.5. Uh, those were exciting days. So yeah, I used reason a lot, That's you cool. know, very influenced from David Crowder band. Cause they okay. were like all about reason. That's actually where I'd first heard of it was David Crowder's drummer used reason a lot to make tracks. Okay. Yeah. And, I had uh, a roommate that loved it. So I gravitated toward it. It was but, such yeah. an interesting software. Cause it was taking real world, Mm-hmm. you know equipment i remember you could flip the rack you know and actually like literally yeah. wire it. unplug stuff yeah <laughs> that was my favorite and you see the things jiggle yeah and i was like oh wow, that's so cool and i just yeah. remember how amazing and i'm sure if i listen to it now i could probably tell the difference but i was just amazed at how amazing the actual sounds sounded mm-hmm. and i saw a meme just yesterday about you know somebody picking the right snare yeah. And it was like, you know, a bunch of people playing slot machines. But yeah. And you like I would do that on my computer. I was just, you know, just listen to all these different ones. Like, I don't know what to pick. I mean, there's too many. If you give me two snares, then I might know it. But anyway, I just yeah, those days were a lot of fun. I'm sure it's still somewhat similar with, you know, some of the newer softwares and things like that. Yeah. But I don't know. I would actually I would love to pick up reason actually again. It's been years since I've opened it up. Well, now you can record to it. Yeah, I have a friend who produces exclusively inside of Reason. Oh, really? Okay. And he loves it, and he's a master at it. I mean, the stuff he makes is amazing. But those were good days. That Reason, Ableton Live. I mean, tracks have come so... They have come such a long way since when I first started in 2001. Like, we were pressing play on an iPod with just like an mp3 yeah. that was panned like click was on the left hand side of the mp3 and all the tracks yeah. were on the right hand side and you just press play on the ipod and you go like right there weren't right, even right. cues people weren't doing cues at that time no. it's so interesting no um i'm not actually really sure where that started when i think back to it the i can't cues? remember yeah i, don't yeah, know. I can't remember but when for me it started with loop community so i don't yeah because I, I think use... even when we first started loop community in 2009 we weren't using cues. Oh, really? And at so some you point, started that in 2009. So how I started seven years ago. So yeah, so you had been around for a little while. 
Yeah, we've been around for a while. Each other. Yeah, so you've been around about five or six Both. years. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't have cues at that time. And you know what? When we first started Leap Community, we sold Reason files. Oh, we did sold, you? We did sell MP3s of the track, but we also sold the Reason file of the track, which actually okay. was pretty cool because people could have the actual production file mm -hmm. and change it. Or mess, you know, they had all the MIDI information to like yeah. change the sound or change the performance. How much would that be? Like, how much would would people charge for I think we, to, to have their file? Like, I'm talking about like now, like the master track, and then you you have the the addition of oh well, yeah. actually, you can have the Pro Tools or whatever you know, whatever software they're using. Yeah, is it Pro Tools? Is that one that was super big? Pro Tools, Logic. Yeah, 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 yeah. people were making them in all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I think we sold the reason files at that time for fourteen ninety nine. Oh wow! That's... But you know what? They didn't sell very. We didn't. People didn't really want them, so we stopped selling them. Um, but it was a very unique time period. Mm -hmm. Tracks were literally at that time being run by like an iPod, or some people were using Ableton Live. Yeah. Um, but they weren't. Tracks uh... were. You know what they also weren't at that time? And I'm, I'm rewinding now to like 2009. Let's go. Tracks were not stems. They no, weren't no, no. like bass.wave, drums.wave, guitar.wave, lead electric guitar.wave. No one, that was not a thing. People were playing with like electronic instruments that right. were like maybe like a shaker and like a little arpeggiator and a cool pad and a synth exactly. all panned on an MP3 file. Exactly. I was... Uh, when I was a part of a gospel choir at Lee University, it's called Evangelistic Singers. We used an MPC and we would make our tracks and our track. Like when we said track, we were just talking about, well, actually we called it click, but it also had different percussion type yeah. instruments in there. And then we had the ability, we just set to the different yeah. uh, buttons to, you know, a horn line here, a, you know, a synth line yeah. there. Yeah, it was cool. But that's that's my that was the extent of my track using other than being playing at yeah. other churches and i do think that's interesting how people everyone calls them something different I, like yeah. you guys said you I used don't know to what call to them click them. and yeah. so when i was using them everybody was calling them loops which is why loop community is called loop community right, because right. the word for what we are using was just loops people would be like hey man are you playing with loops this weekend and you knew what that meant tracks right. stems multi-tracks backing tracks accompaniment tracks click um yeah it's all well, the, just... reason, the reason why i don't call them tracks um is because i think of tracks as like you remember when you would put the tape in the tape thing and then you would you would be able to decide what key you wanted it to be or okay. you know you had like three choices like high medium and low oh yeah i called those tracks or like the cd is like oh yeah uh, play track three that's that's the low key. That's the one I need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah th those yeah. were that was what I associated to the word track. And so when I came into yeah. using loops, I either just said click or loop, just because that's what you called it. Yeah, I personally love the name loop. Um, but over the course of probably in the past five years, people are now mostly using the word tracks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you? Did you want to change the name of Loop Community to Loop at one time, maybe a few years ago? So we rebranded. We so we built a whole new website, and at that time, we decided to rebrand. Okay. Uh, just our logo, like we kind of updated the colors on the logo. There used to be like the colored logo. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? I remember that. Yeah. Um, Reminded me of Google, a little bit. And so we didn't change the name of the company. Uh, we just kind of like a nickname. So like a lot of times okay. people were calling Loop Community like, hey, are you, are you going to get that on Loop? Mm -hmm. They kind of were using it as like slang or short, like a nickname for it. So our real name has always been Loop Community. That's our full name, like Matt McCoy, right. Loop Community. Right. But people called us Loop. Okay. Um, we actually, though, are, and another reason we did that too is when we were putting our logo places, the logo was really long. It was hard to like fit into like a nice booklet. So oh, it actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. People would My shrink work, yeah. it down so it's so small. We were like, well, we need a more condensed logo. <laughs> um, so that was also another reason. But we actually are going to be adding community back to our logo here pretty soon. Oh, okay. Just because mm -hmm. of the question you just asked. Yeah. People think that we changed our name to Loop, and we did not. You just shortened. You're just using your first name. 
we just used it as like slang yeah, yeah. as a nick- nickname yeah. Yeah. but we're always I, but we're called loop community right okay that makes sense yeah i, yeah. Didn't, I mean i personally didn't carry the way I, I just noticed i noticed yeah. a difference you know when i would log on it would say something like just it would just say loop yeah in places and yeah anyway that's cool yeah i, I remember yeah starting to use uh loops for the first time and I, I think the people that work with me in, in my office, my office is across our parking lot. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they would hear me listening to tracks or like trying to find the right one yeah, and all right. these different, uh, community tracks. And then I right. would go, I would hear loopcommunity.com, you know, loopcommunity.com. Shoom. Yeah. Loop yeah. Well, that, that, dot com. And that's your it's, voice, right? Yeah, that is my voice. And some yeah, of those are, some tracks still have that swoosh in it. Oh, so some of them don't now. Okay, I see. Some of them don't. Yeah. I think all the new tracks we post don't have the swoosh. Yeah. If you hear one with a swoosh, you're like listening that's an old to one, an right? old legacy track that was probably before 2013. Oh wow. Yeah, and uh, and they would be like, "Will you please stop doing that?" <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. I gotta listen. I gotta make sure I like it because if it was a yeah. community track, you didn't know what was in that thing. Yeah, you didn't know. You had to be able to listen to it. Yeah. So I like that. And you still yeah. offer that. But I do. I did like when you started using, you know, to where you can like hear each individual on a section of the song. That was a big difference. That made a big uh, difference for us anyway. Yeah. And but, that that feature. We call that the custom mixer. Oh, that feature okay. took so long to build. At did one really? point, at one point, we had built the whole feature. So this was on our old website. The old, okay. like, really colorful website. I don't know if you... Probably when you started using it. Probably, yeah. Uh, we built a custom mix feature for that website. Okay. And it broke everything. Like, the whole website just stopped working. It was a total so, disaster. So that's why you went to the new website. It was because so, of that. So, literally, I had to make a decision. I was in Europe at the time. And the website had crashed. We had launched this custom mixer, mixer but it wasn't working. We had spent tens of thousands of dollars on that feature. And oh I was like, gosh. you know what? We're going to have to just scrap this entirely and build our website from scratch. And that's what we did. <laughs> so I basically cool. threw away all of that code. Everything we had spent money on building and yeah. years building just threw it away. And we started over from scratch. Wow. That's and bold. And it was bold. But looking back, I'm like, man, I'm glad we did that. Because... yeah. We just needed, it, it was time. Like we had been using that website for eight years and it got yeah. us to where we were, but we needed something completely custom. Right. I mean, I would have to agree. I mean, I I, I didn't have a problem with the old site because I'd probably used it maybe two or three years. I don't know the timeline exactly, but yeah, I remember logging on the first time and it was completely different, but yet so familiar at the same time. I was just like, oh, this is great. And then yeah. I, I searched the song. I'm like, hey, it works. And then yeah. there was a time, I don't know if there was some big bug, but there was a time where one of the search bars, because you had two search places, did not work to save my life. I was like, what is wrong? You know? Yeah. And I didn't, I, think I we never got rid blamed. Of that. Okay. But anyway, it, I was like, what is wrong? And so then I would find my workaround to try to get that song. And then I would find Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anytime you launch something new like that, there's, oh, I'm, so, many, I'm sure. there's so many bugs. But um, I'm really glad we ended up launching the new website. And that was in 2019, cool. I believe we did that. Oh, was it that recent? Yeah. Wow. So in 2017, we scrapped the entire thing. <clears throat> I was great. like, forget this, we're moving on. And then we started building a new one and it took us two years and we built a whole new platform. Custom, because we were using a content management system. We were using something called Drupal, which is basically like oh, okay. a, it's like a uh, overkill WordPress. Oh, okay. Which I it's like a very WordPress too. Yeah, it's like a very very advanced WordPress, but like not good for what we're doing. So we had to build just like a very custom platform. Yeah, I like it. So what led you to start Loop Community? Like, so you were I guess leading worship full time. Like what what was that turning point? I guess I don't know. I mean, yeah, I was on staff at a church. I was on staff at Willow Creek, and I needed a track from Mighty to Save. And I was up really late making a track for Mighty to Save. And I was like, this is crazy. Um, I was in Reason, actually, making a track. Okay. And I thought, this is nuts. Mighty to Save is the most popular song in the world right now. 
someone in the world has probably already made a track for Midas to say. Uh, yeah, I should, I'm sure. I should be able to just go buy one. And I couldn't. There were no places to go buy one. I'm like, well, I should start a website where worship leaders can go and mm -hmm. upload tracks that they make. So I could upload the one I'm making right now and other worship leaders could buy it from me. And so that night is when I started Loop Community. And so um, I just started uploading all the tracks I had made. I had made probably like 50 at that time. Yeah. I uploaded all of them. I put little PayPal buttons next to them. <laughs> and then I started inviting other worship leaders that I knew to upload to contribute to that. Yeah. Ones that they make. And we licensed all the songs. So we would directly okay. work with music publishers and record labels to license the song so that they get a, a you know a portion of every song that sells. Right. And uh yeah, that's how it started. And I mean it was a very, very humble beginning. It was very different back then than it is now. Yeah, but I mean that's so, how things start. It was a very simple just blog. Yeah. 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 That's how things start blog. with a need. Yeah. And you, you feel the need and then that just grows into something huge. Yeah. Right. At what point did Loop community surpass what you made at a church or did it? Well, I guess it did because you, you employ tens of people or. Maybe. Um, I started, so I started building the, yeah, I was on staff at a church full time and I was kind of doing this just on the side. Mm -hmm. And as it grew, as it became more popular, I just started kind of stepping back from full-time ministry. I went from full-time to part-time to, the next step was contractor, which I think was like, I lead worship 30 weekends a year as oh, a contractor. Okay. And I don't come into the office at all. I just lead worship. Right, right. Um, and then it went from 30 weekends a year to 20 weekends a year. I remember that. Wow. And then it went from like 20 to like once a month to where now. Well, I mean, and that was years ago. In 2017 or 2016 is when I was not on staff at a church anymore. So kind of slowly like moved away from full-time ministry. What was that conversation like though? Going to your pastor or whoever and saying, so um, I want to be part-time. <laughs> like how did, yeah. how did that work? Cause I think I... to them, it was pretty obvious that it was going to happen. Oh really? Okay. So they were like, well, we either like let this guy stick around because they also needed a worship leader too. So, yeah. or we lose him entirely. Mm -hmm. And so they were very, very gracious. Honestly, I'm, I look back and I'm like, man, that church was super generous to um, just to be able to kind of see that dream that I had inside and encourage it. You know, they didn't mm -hmm. squash it. That's cool. They encouraged it. And they were like, yeah, you should do it. Like, this is great. And, and you lead worship for us. You know, it's a win-win. Like we have a worship leader yeah. on Sunday. So and honestly, that's the part of, that's honestly what I love the most. I like leading worship. What drove me crazy was sitting in the office all day long, every day, yeah. doing meetings. And I'm like, just, I just want to like, I can build a set list. I can get a team scheduled and I can mm -hmm. lead worship. Did you use planning center? I did use planning center. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> At that time. Yeah. I remember, I think we used planning center like when they first launched it. Oh, did they? Okay. Or did you? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I I just, I thought, I thought about that. Go ahead. Well, I remember, I just had this memory of, I remember Planning Center was a brand new product out and we were trying it as a, like, Planning Center had reached out to our church to be a, like a trial church, basically. Okay, okay we'll let you guys yeah. use it. Can you guys just use the product and let us know what you think? Yeah, yeah. And I remember we were using it and I remember the chord chart at that time, you could only do a one page, like a one column. So the chord chart spread off into like, you know, three or two or three pages. Right. And I remember I emailed them and I'm like, hey, we would love to have a two column chord chart where like mm -hmm. on one sheet, you've got two columns. And within like five hours, they had implemented that feature. Oh, really? And I remember wow. sitting at, in our worship team meeting and being like, man, this is an amazing company. Like they listened to us and they changed it that quickly. That's cool. So every worship leader who's using a two column chord chart from Planning Center can thank me for recommending that feature. But that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome right there have you seen uh worship tools planning so if you go to worshiptools.com no, they have a planning app that's completely free 
It's basically like a planning center. Now it doesn't have like the conference. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have like all the bells and whistles, but for most churches, planning center is actually overkill. (laughs) Like, Oh yeah. Really? Like there's so much stuff you could do in planning center that probably is a lot of churches don't use all, all those features. Yeah. Um, but worship tools has an app. If you go to worship tools.com, it's called planning. It's completely free and it's basically a worship. I mean, it's exactly, it's planning center, yeah. but it's free. And honestly, okay. if I were starting a church tomorrow, like if I were a part of like a church plant, I would use worship tools. Okay. Because planning center is pretty expensive for a small yeah, church. Especially when you add in everything. Yeah. Yeah. We use them for pretty much everything that we do, but yeah. I'm going to check I mean, that awesome. out. Yeah. I'm going to check that out and just, if I were, if like, I were like a small church that didn't have a budget. Yeah. I'd for sure check out planning. Cause you can add, I, don't, I know planning center has a, a limit to how many people you can add with their free version. So I'm yeah. guessing you can add. And this one is unlimited. Oh, unlimited for, yeah. That's really and you cool. can build plans and schedule people and add core charts and links to videos or whatever you need to do. Yeah. That's really cool. So you started worship. I mean, <laughs> you started loop community out of yep. a need and it's become what you do full time now, right? I mean, is there anything else you do yeah. that's kind of associated in this world of worship leading and providing um, a service or is that pretty much it? No, not really. I loop loop community. I, I do write songs. Yeah. And I'm actually I, getting ready to record or release an album. I saw that. And that's about, really cool, man. Probably in January I'm gonna release it. That's really cool. I'm excited so just, about that. Just yesterday I got all the final masters. Oh, really? For it. So yeah, so I do write music and so is this a worship album or just uh it is worship Matt yeah. McCoy? Okay. It is worship, but it's so they're um, all gonna be on plan on loop community, right? They will be exclusively. <laughs> you so, gotta push that big time right on the front yeah. page, right? When you log yeah. on, it's like Matt McCoy's music right here. Yeah. What I should do is like do what Apple did like six years ago with the U2 just, album. Remember when they just like put it on everybody's phone? Put it phone all in, yeah, exactly. Without anybody asking. I, we should just add my album to every Prime account without even asking. Yeah, you go to add it to your set, and it's like, oh, yeah. okay. There's yeah. that song. Oh, you did have you a have free to... song a long time ago, though. So I don't know who wrote it, but there yeah. was a free song. Yeah, I wrote oh. it. Oh, that one back yes. then was yours, too? Yeah, I've written a bunch that have been on Loop Community. And you just put it on there for free? Yeah. That's that's really so cool. So worship leaders could have it. Yeah. Because um, for me, it's not about... The songwriting piece is not about a career or making money off of it. Yeah. I just love songwriting and if a church can use it, they can use it. So. Well, you're a great vocalist too, man. I, thanks, I heard man. you at the, the worship innovators oh, thanks, conference brother. and yeah, I love it. And I want to know though, cause you, you'd already started mentioning this. Oh, you mentioned it to me at the conference, but you already started mentioning this uh, online. So like people know what's coming, yeah. but can you talk a little bit more about what's coming for loop community? Like, yes. what's next, I guess? I mean, you, you're at a great place right now, but what's now, or what do you want to see, I guess? Yeah, so well? we are rebuilding our Prime app from the ground up. Kind of like we were talking about earlier, how we rebuilt the website from the ground up. Yeah, That's happening to the Prime app. And uh, the Prime app has been around since 2012. We were the first app out there for running tracks on a phone or an iPad. Really? Okay, yeah. so is it Master Tracks? Is that the other one? Multi-tracks. Multi-tracks. Yeah, they uh, came out so... with one after us. They saw, they thought what we were doing was so cool. Yeah, yeah They came yeah. out with their own. <laughs> uh, so, okay. yeah, we had the first app out there for running tracks. And then uh, we had some copycats. And then, but this That's app right. has been around for a long time. And in its current you know, form. Yeah. Yeah. And it needs updating. So instead of just like kind of fixing or updating like the current structure we have, we're like, let's just start with a whole new structure. Wow. And uh, so we're rebuilding the app from scratch. It's the next generation of prime. Like it is, it's pretty cool. I actually showed online, I think on our Instagram, you can see pictures. I showed some screenshots of what it looks like. Kind of a whole new look, but we're also going to add a bunch of new features. We're going to add one of my biggest pain point features as a worship leader is when I plug in my track rig, and I have to route every single track one at a time to the track rig. It's just, it's takes a lot of time, tedious. <clears throat> yeah. And so we're going to add a feature for auto routing where you could just go in settings and be like on all my songs, if the track is acoustic, send it to output five. 
And so you could just set that one time in settings. When you plug in your track rig, it auto routes everything for you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so, I didn't. I don't have a track rig. I was gonna get one when you first announced those. I I wanted one, but I don't have enough space. Yeah, on my board yeah. for that. We we have uh thirty two channels, so. It, oh yeah. It kind of limits us. Um, yeah. But anyway, well, if you're using multi outs, you could use this auto routing feature. We're also gonna add right. a pad player. People have been asked asking about like how do I just like play like a pad in the background mm -hmm. behind the tracks. We're adding that. We're adding. Cool. Um, I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head, but we're also adding a feature where we're going to sync with a music chart app where okay. as you play through the song, the charts on everybody's iPads and your band will automatically update and follow you. Praise in charts? We're going to use music stand. Oh yeah. Music stand. Of course. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. So that's, it's going to all sync together. Should be great. That would be amazing. So then how would you, how do you connect that? all together it's just online it'll just be uh wirelessly through uh i think it's bluetooth it's using oh okay that'd be cool yeah, so we have if everyone in your band had an ipad yeah. it would just automatically like prime would be the master device and all the other ones would just follow prime and then they would just switch by themselves yeah so it goes to the, if I prime like goes to the other song it's going to change the chart automatically for yeah, everyone yeah. so cool. same it'll it'll do the key everything so if you transpose in prime to like the key of b it'll transpose the charts to the key of b that would be nice. Yeah. Because we, we've done that plenty of times. I'm like, you know, I need that. I need it in yeah. G. We need to take because yeah. my voice is lower. I need that yeah. down. And then I got to go on planning center, yeah. make a new arrangement, this and that, pull it back up. Yeah. And yeah, that's really cool. It'll now, save you a lot can't, of time. You can't get rid of the feature of being able to change the key while the song's playing. Because my bass player, he runs the, the loops and he'll do that occasionally just messing around. And it's funny. It's just he does it on purpose or do you guys actually like really do you guys want he to does do it that? on per like like he he's a goofball and so during like a sound check yeah he'll yeah. just mess with it and we're like what are you doing right now and it, so because yeah. it's funny because actually we are we are removing the feature of changing it while it's playing okay well he'll have and to that is it. because <laughs> people have been doing it by accident and they're like oh, are you my serious drummer. yeah yeah oh, so they no. don't want the key to change by accident yeah, that would be well, I hope the whole team. But no, that'd be cool if it happened by accident. The whole team goes, you know, they just switch yeah. immediately. If they follow, then that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, you're like, wow, that was so dynamic. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. that team, they're they're incredible. I know. If you but, can find a worship team that can do that, Ty Tribbett's team back in maybe five six years ago, they had a song. It was it was actually a CCM song that they redid, and they changed yeah. the key up. They went, I think, up like six modulations and then back down a few and. Oh, I mean, it was insane. Interesting. But anyway, so that would be a lot of fun to to chart. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, man. Well, that's cool. the new version of Prime, yeah, it should be out. We're, we're right now shooting for March. Okay. So we will bad. see. Um, will it be a brand new like download? You'll have to go and download this one or it'll, it'll be an update. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be a nice update. We're also adding like little features like you can remove the start and end sections um, of songs. You can That'd create cool. mashups like between two songs. If you want like two different songs to kind of like play back to back, you could do that. More so than just fading into the other yeah. song. You can yeah. actually connect them. Okay. Yeah. So there's a bunch I, of like other little fixes that are going to be, could be good. I'll be going crazy on this because once you, as soon as you release it, I'll download it and I'll learn as much as I can start pushing out, cool. you know, random videos about it. Cause yeah, I've, just, I've been a pro what what caused you to want to call it prime and not just like loop loop community or or whatever like what where did that come from wow that question. is actually i think the first time someone's ever asked me that question good i haven't listened to any of your and i had to kind of rewind i had to rewind in my head thinking why <laughs> did we call it prime um you know, this sounds so crazy, but Looptimus came first. The foot control. Did it really? Have. Okay. So that was a, that was, that came out before Prime did. That'd have been a cool name, I guess, but then that would be. Well, so, Loop little... well, we actually named Prime Prime because if you say Looptimus Prime together, it sounds like Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, Prime yeah. Which is like All Transformers. Right. You heard it here, Which, folks. That is the first time anybody has ever asked me that question. There we go. 
Um, I don't know if Exclusive anybody knows right that. here. Worship I don't think podcast. anybody knows that except for the <laughs> listeners now. Of, of, Everyone's going to know it now. All the millions that will listen yeah. to this podcast and watch it, they'll all know. So, sorry. You can't ask it first. Anymore. Named Lutimus first, and then we're like, well, what should we name the app? We're like, well, let's name it Prime. That's crazy. It's great. And then, yeah, I just, I love seeing like the progression of a company like yours and and especially that it has to do directly with worship leading. And, and I, I know that there are people, uh, I've even done a podcast talking about uh, loops versus not using loops at all. And I'm just maybe to end it out, like, what's your take on the, you created a company that's based around this. So I, w- I would just love to hear just a snippet of what you, what you tell people. About of that. why like, they should use it of why they either why they should or why yeah. it's okay i guess i don't know yeah maybe yeah. some people don't feel like it's okay yeah it is interesting we do hear a lot of people say like yeah is it cheating or you know is it maybe not helping build a real team of people i always say that tracks should never replace people so mm-hmm. if you have a bass player at your church and maybe he's not very good so someone might be tempted, well, we have, we have a bass player that's not very good. Let's just use a bass track. That's perfect. That's a bad reason to use tracks. If you have people, they are the ones that should be playing. Right, even right. if it's someone who like is not very good or even someone who wants to play. What if someone came to you and said, hey, I want to learn how to play bass or I want to play bass. Like, will you mm-hmm. help? Then for sure, use them. Don't use a track for bass. Uh, people win all the time over technology. And so... Um, it's all about people. So I would say use tracks for in situations where you literally don't have a person. Like you have no piano player. You have no one who even wants to play piano. Mm. You have no piano ever. And you don't want your worship though to suffer because you don't have a piano player. That's where a track and technology can help. Because now in a situation where you literally had no other choice and the alternative is that worship like suffers because you don't have a piano player. Right you can actually have a piano track and that's, what's awesome. I think it's a huge, it's a tool that worship leaders can use to enhance what they've got going on at their church and to enhance. That's the key word, right, not to right, replace, right, right. not to replace, but to enhance what you've already got going on. Exactly. And so. we, we have, we have a couple people that are learning piano and I have them more as like a keys to, they play that keys to role. Yeah. Pads, organ, even yeah. though organs, a serious instrument, but, but still yeah. I, I, I am in actively looking for a, a pianist and we're going to start paying a pianist um, in January. But so for the last month or so, we've been using loops a lot more often um, than we have before. Cause I, I play piano now and I, I would just play every song. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I need to get, I need to go back to what I used to do before I played piano. Yeah. And so on the first song, always on the first song now, maybe for the last four weeks, I have somebody on loop playing for me and I'm just like so freed and just, yeah. I, I don't know. It's brought an excitement back into leading because yeah. I don't really, I mean, even though I can play that or bass or guitar or whatever, I don't really want to play anything on the stage. Like I want to connect with the people and it also helps me think about like what I'm going to say or if the Holy Spirit like bring something yeah. up in, in my in my spirit i can right. say it and not have to worry about what's going on right right um so and, and I, I totally agree with that and i actually met and I, I say it this way because it it means a lot to me but i i met my drummer when i didn't have a drummer twice i've only not had a drummer on a sunday morning twice so i met my drummer at your conference um he played drums right and he played drums on a lot of tracks a lot of uh, a lot of loops that you guys made, right? The drummer that played there. Oh yeah, Stephen Puckett. Yeah. How do you know Stephen? Well, I met him at uh, Worship oh, Innovators okay. Conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I met him, I was like, "So, correct me if I'm wrong. You play drums on a lot of the yeah, uh, premium, premium tracks. tracks, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's me." And I was like, "Yes." Yeah. I met I met my drummer, and you know, if my drummer's not here for rehearsal. I don't know who, you know, who's playing every single one of them, especially, I guess, if we're using like the master tracks, then that may not be him, but it, I don't know. It was just really cool to me because there is a person behind that. It's not like you're using AI to make it. I don't guess. Yeah, no, it's a person behind it. Yeah. Yeah. All of our premium tracks are recorded by real people. So yep. 
go to cool. the studio and record everything. Yeah, we we need to do. I need to come back to Chicago, and we need to do a Loop Community Studio tour. Yeah, that all happens in Nashville, so you need to go there. Okay, I need to go to Nashville. <laughs> hey, that's closer anyway. I'm I'm yeah. in South Carolina, so that's perfect. Yep. So so you go down to Nashville and you guys record. Like, what are your sessions like? I know I said the last thing. We're well, we used about. to go to a studio, like a real studio, and all the session players would come in and record. We I think we oh, did really? ten songs in a day. Okay. Which is that's aggressive. Yeah. Um, but then when COVID happened, everybody went remote and all these musicians started tracking their instruments at home. So the drummer oh. will track his instrument at home, bass player, guitar player, and then they mail or not mail, they <laughs> send all the wave files they in could to Steven, it. who puts yeah. it who compiles it together as a track. Okay. So does right he, now it's all virtual. Does he excuse me, does he mix that? Like does he master yeah. that as a okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. So you can more or less trust the mix that comes in, but then you you decide yeah. what you want. Yeah. Ducked or whatever once yeah. you get in the okay. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It all is done remote, which actually has been great because it allows us to do a lot more. And uh the other thing too this year that has been big that many people I think wouldn't know unless they've been around Luke Kennedy for a long time is that for many years, we couldn't get master tracks for artists. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't have Hillsong. We didn't have Elevation, Bethel, Chris Tomlin, Passion. Uh, They were exclusive to other places. And for years, we didn't have them, which is why we had community tracks, which is why we had premium tracks, because we didn't have the original masters. I'm going to tell you, I love premium tracks. If you have a premium track on something... Yeah, that's the one I'm buying because because it, it of the price a, or what? No, I mean, because I, I'm quality over price typically in almost everything I do. Yeah. Unless it's just astronomical. But I I like the I like your tracks because it it feels it feels like more like us, if that mm. makes any sense. Whereas when I hear when I hear the actual stems from the album, it sounds like that. Like it, huh. it yeah. I can tell the yeah. difference and I know yeah. people can tell the difference. I mean, not yeah. everybody's stupid. So I yeah. just like the fact that it sounds like us more than theirs. Mm-hmm. It, and, and I know you're playing the same parts. I know you're playing basically the same thing, right. but there's still a difference. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there is a difference. You're right. Yeah. I, that's really good feedback. I appreciate that. That's actually yeah, really good it. to know of why people really would want a premium. Yeah. It is and nice that, that they are cheaper though, but. Yeah, That's they are not cheaper, a big thing to me. But you're right. It it sounds like a church versus right. an artist. And you don't hear, you don't have to, there's no competing people in the background, especially right now. We're in this movement of tons of people circling the worship leaders, yeah. and you don't hear any of that in the background. So it allows you to to have that on it. That allows you to have that experience at your own place without, oh, I gotta take this out because i can hear the people behind them in this particular stem i don't know and especially drum stems on some of these ones that are coming from the actual artists mm-hmm. they're a little little rough especially yeah. in the live worship settings right right yeah so well the news the news i was going to share though is just that if people do like master tracks we now have them all we have every artist you can think of man it's been awesome hanging out with you i don't want to take any more of your time but i really appreciate you and um your son I, I haven't heard is he okay I, well he already he's already gone he uh my wife oh came she down. came in okay yeah awesome so yeah man it's been great getting to know you i'm glad you came to the conference too worship should yes. we're gonna do it again october two and three i will be there i haven't signed up yet i haven't signed up yet but i will be there i'm bringing cool. i'll probably bring some people because i me and jimmy were just like yeah let's let's just go we want to do this because we've been trying to do this yeah. since 2020 yeah. And I was like, yeah, we're going 2022. Yeah. And we did. It was amazing, by the way. I love the conference. I'd love the feel of the conference, everything about it. Cool. Uh, it was Good. great. Breakout sessions were so helpful. I didn't go to the last two segments on the last six. We were doing a behind the scenes of Oak yeah. Brook, which ended up being really cool. cool. Um, so I don't, you, you probably know um, Donye. Yep. So I was on staff at that church for that's two right. Years, actually, that's right. That's right. Well, yeah. Oh, for two years. Yeah. Yeah. But he he was super awesome. Showed us around. And yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, man. 
I um, um, dude, I'm glad that you had a good. I love what you said that the feel like the feel of it because that's what we mm-hmm. were going for. We wanted this to feel like community. We wanted it to feel like a conference for like the average, like the normal, like the real yeah. worship leaders, not yeah. like the rock star worship leaders, but just like the, people right. who were like doing it every week at a church of 200 people. Exactly. So exactly. That's and, what we wanted and, it to feel like. And that was perfect. Like there was enough. If you're doing this for the first time, here's information. Yeah. There, and mixed with you've been doing this a while here's some stuff to help you out like i i came back recharged and ready yeah. to go and yeah i have i have some new stuff on my plate now that i'm like okay i need another conference to help me with this but, but i'm still. happy to hear that man because yeah sometimes people leave conferences and they actually don't feel encouraged they feel discouraged yeah. and the and reason is because they leave feeling like wow that was awesome but we're never going to be able to do that at our church right and i like and I how think- you use the I think going along with what you just said, you you did the um, uh, more of an acoustic style service oh, or, yeah. or worship In set. One of the mornings, yeah. Yeah, kind of going along with that. I don't know if that was a an issue that day and you had to do that or if that was 100% no. planned out that way, but it felt planned. And one thing, I don't remember if it was you or somebody, but you guys said, you can do this at yeah. your church. Like if this is all you have, yeah, you can do this. But yeah. So that was really yeah. cool. That's what we wanted people to leave feeling like, oh, I can do this. Right. Like this is and excited about it. Like, oh, yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to now implement this mm-hmm. in my church. That's yeah. what Worship and, Innovators was all about. And you had a stacked team. I would, I love everybody there. The I, And I got to know some people that I didn't really get to know before. And yeah, so that was really cool. Well, you should come next year. I will be there. We're going to get the website up here pretty soon in about a month. So okay, we'll open up tickets and. It's going to be a fun year. Absolutely. I'll be there. Do you still have the, uh, I can take this out, but do you still have the, um, like if you went, is that, have I missed that window? For That if you window's went? gone. Okay. That's all that right. window ended, I think November 1st, but if you email oh. me, we'll get it. We'll figure it out. Well, it doesn't matter to me because I, I'm, I want to invest into the conference anyway. Yeah. So well, we should okay. offer a promo. Maybe once we launch tickets, we should offer a promo to like your audience. Okay. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so. let's do that. And I, I can, I'll figure out a way to. Because that is the other that. really unique, fun thing about Worship Innovators is that it's all these companies and mm-hmm. all these audiences or these groups and communities of people that it's a kind of, a, it's fun to be able to meet people who actually are part of your audience. So like, yeah. it'd be cool to get a bunch of hey, worship. <laughs> yeah. As we get closer, I mean, maybe we can do this again. And I, yeah. I would love to have you talk about the yeah. conference and all that. And that's a good idea. Um, yeah. Maybe next well, spring. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to know more about Loop Community, if for some reason you don't know already, I have links below. If you want to know about the Worship Innovators Conference that's coming up, I will have a link below for that. And uh, yeah, thank you, Matt, so much for being here. It's an honor. And we'll see you guys next time. Remember, great worship leaders are always learning. See you guys.